grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from Christ Jesus, our Savior and friend. Dear friends, we get to reflect today on how our Lord calls us not only to be members of Trinity, members of the Holy Christian Church on earth, but God calls us family. And that's a big deal. Because there's no more comforting thought than to know how you belong to the Lord Almighty. And we've been hearing a lot of that in our reading and in our songs. The maker of heaven and earth. And what that tells me is that we have a future. We have a lot to look forward to. We know that, that everything we accomplish in this life, it's the glory of God. And what awaits us in the life hereafter is a whole new beginning. You know... The way that we as Christians can think like that, the way that we as Christians can believe that is because we were raised in the fear of the Lord. King Solomon says that's the beginning of wisdom, to fear the Lord our God. And so as we take a look at our sermon outline, we see it's entitled Healthy Faith, Healthy Home. We realize that's the first step to a healthy faith, to trust and to believe and to have respect for the Lord our God. So let me, let me refresh your memory on that first reading, Isaiah chapter 40. He wrote, Do you not know? Do you not hear? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth. Its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, he who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, spreads them like a tent to dwell in. And here's the part that you probably know for well. They who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary, walk and not faint. And so if there was anything that you should have gotten from this opening Bible reading, it is that God reigns supreme and of course that's that's what we believe that there is no one like our god there never will be and so that's even how uh the people of the old testament believe they knew that yahweh operates on a whole nother level in fact he proved it to them one day stopping the sun in the midst of the sky just standing there thinking, Lord, how are you accomplishing such an amazing feat? And over and over again, the Lord showed amazing things like splitting the Red Sea and other grand miracles. And so as we, as we see those, those ways in which God operates on such a magnificent way, we realize that God has done amazing things. And I, I love to talk about this Isaiah chapter 40. Because imagine now exactly what he's talking about. Imagine what it would have taken to lay earth, our entire planet, mind you, on a foundation like a house, right? What would that take? Something beyond our comprehension. And so let's try and figure that out scientifically, because when we say the foundation of the earth, are we talking about the core, right? That if we were to, to drill down to the center of it, it would still be magnificently hot and dangerous for us to kind of take a peek in personal inventory at the core. But I don't think that's what he's talking about there, a foundation. Are we talking about perhaps the global mountain ranges, all that rock, that solid earth? Is that the foundation? I don't know. That's, that's kind of the top of it, maybe maybe not, the foundation of the earth. What could earth possibly rest on in the great emptiness of space? Well, the only thing I could come up with would be, especially since earth moves, right? The only thing that could be would be the gravitational pull of the sun, right? If you want to talk about the foundation of planets, they are held in place in their revolution around the sun, a star, a star that is in fact a hundred times bigger than the earth. If we were to take a hundred earths and stack them together, 
in a makeshift globe, that would be the sun. A hundred earths. God called the sun into being from nothing. And then what our Lord did is he took every planet of our solar system like little chickens, like little hens. God took planets and let them play around the sun year after year. And so what we realize, again, as, as God talks in this way, he says, I took the sky and I pulled it open like a curtain and laid it over the earth like a tent so that man could dwell underneath. See, what we realize is that God, who was there in the beginning, Yahweh, the one who is the Alpha and the Omega, he was the one who admired the very first morning that our planet ever knew. And so what we realize from Adam and Eve and from day one, mankind throughout history has learned to wait upon the Lord. And that's a good thing. Because it draws our focus. It draws our hearts and prepares us to trust in the Lord our God who can accomplish amazing things. Because when we trust in our Lord, that, that trust, it, it gives way to hope. Knowing that the Lord will take care of us even when we are weak and heavy laden. I don't know if you, you saw, but in our table back there, in our sign-up sheets, there's a, a little devotional, right? Uh, a husband and a wife on the cover holding hands, because we're, we're entering into National Marriage Week. And as the pastors of Trinity, of course, that's Pastor Henderson's favorite thing to talk about. We want to help every year, help our relationships, our lives with one another. And so as our thoughts are pulled towards home, we want to be able to, to place those devotions in your hands. We have them in the narthex for you to take home. And take a look at the wisdom that several couples have shared with us, the joy of marriage and that relationship. But of course, when, when we realize life together, we realize even though marriage is the vital friendship in your life, that too can teach, teach us and lead us in all our relationships, right? Right? That, again, I think gets at the heart of, of healthy faith, healthy home. When Christ is the center of our marriages, Christ is the center of our lives together, we are blessed. And so take a look at, at that wisdom shared with us, how that can improve our Christian relationships with everyone. Because, of course, we want our moms and our dads, our grandmas, our grandpas, all our children to benefit, too. We want to be able to share in the blessings as together we believe in and worship the Lord, our God Almighty. What's neat about that is that it actually comes out in our collect for today. That's our second bullet point there in our outline, share in the blessings. Look what, look what, look what we prayed. It said, O oh Lord, keep your family, the church, continually in the true faith, that relying on the hope of your heavenly grace may ever be defended by your mighty power through Jesus Christ, our Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You see, certainly as a part of Trinity's family, we want you to be blessed. We want you to, to be able to come to the Lord in prayer and know that he will heal you when you're sick, that he will strengthen you your faith, and that by the power of the Holy Spirit, every single day of our lives, he will keep us focused on Jesus, our Savior. See, we, today we want to talk about healthy faith, true Christian faith, and, and what that means is that even now we, re we recognize that we are blessed to be in the presence of the Lord. Even for many of our, of our friends and family staying at home, staying warm, and maybe under their blankets at home. Even, even you guys recognize that you are blessed, that God takes care of us even in amongst the severe cold of winter. And so one of the things we want to do by faith as Christians is to ask the Lord every single day or any time that we're worried, say, Dear God, preserve us. 
Lord, save our lives. Take care of us. Bless us to be delivered from the worries of this world. Lord, we know that you are all powerful. Lord, take my life into your capable hands, knowing that I am safe and secure, held close by you. That's true. I tell you, that's the way in which Martin Luther prayed. That's the way that we are taught as God's children to pray. And is that not the kind of faith that we want to teach to those that we love? So that takes us to our final point and, and kind of our, the idea of our children's message that we want to be a family in prayer and devotion to the Lord. And, and Jesus, Jesus modeled that for us. He did this a lot. It's kind of at the center of our gospel reading from Mark chapter 1. It says, And rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he departed and he went out to a desolate place, and there he prayed. Jesus knew, as God and man, he knew that he needed to be with his Father. That even though he was taking care of his family, all of Israel, he also needed to be with his Father. And so we need to learn from that. That even though Jesus was doing very important work, he was ministering to the people of Galilee, people that were severely hurting, suffering. Not only fever and, and, and perhaps cancer or broken limbs or couldn't see or couldn't hear. Jesus was healing everybody whose body was broken, and that was very important. And so if you think about Jesus doing that, perhaps there were a thousand people gathered at his door that night. So Jesus kept healing and kept caring and kept loving his people. And so we realize that's pretty amazing. Jesus, every town he went to was like a one-man hospital, right? Even, even better, really. So why would Jesus set aside that for time in prayer? Because he wanted to teach us something important. He wanted to teach us that personal devotion time is important. That it could be a great thing, even if it's just ten minutes. You take a look at a Bible passage, maybe one paragraph, kind of like a portals of prayer, right? And pray. And ask the Lord your God to be with you that day, the entire morning, the entire afternoon, and evening. Lord, be with me and take care of me. And so we want to remind you that as we spend that time with God and his word and in prayer, that makes a great impact on us spiritually, even with just a little bit of time on your part. Because when we talk about God's word, St. Paul loves to talk about this word. He likes to talk about dynamite, right? Have you heard that before? The, the, the dunamis, the dynamite of the gospel power of God for our salvation. Gospel is energy, power. And so the gospel is so very important. That's why we stand up during church so we can hear that gospel clearly and show that we want to hear it because we need the power of God's word to ignite, to drive us, to strengthen our faith into even a greater commitment of love. Take, for instance, our children, right? How vital is it that we bring our kids to church? How vital is it that we want them to hear God's word and to grow in the Christian faith? Because it doesn't just stop, right, at eighth grade. We want them to continue learning, learning the lessons of the Old Testament and the New Testament. We want to give them Sunday school even when they graduate from high school, we want them to continue learning. Because we believe, as the family of God, that the most wonderful treasure that we can hold in our hands is God's Word. It changes lives. There are so many lessons for your life, so many opportunities. When we open up the Scriptures, maybe take a look at King David, or Daniel, or Moses, or Solomon, or Elijah, or Isaiah, or simply open up to our favorite gospel, 
Take a look at the life of Jesus. Take a look at how he loved and lived and teaches us about the kingdom of heaven. But what better way to learn these lessons than to teach them? As we sit down with our little children, as we sit down with a friend, as we sit down with a loved one, we share the greatest blessings of the Lord our God, all of which that he has in store for us. Perhaps you've picked up that I like to talk about heaven, right? Because it's, it's a wonderful promise. That's one of the ways, one of the many ways we could sit down and share God's word as a gospel of peace, a gospel of comfort with one another. May the Lord bless us this day and every day with such an amazing gift of the power of his word. In Jesus' name, amen. And now may the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, to guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Savior and King. Amen.